everyone. I'm Robin and these are my reflections. And today we are here to reflect on the Trinity Tarot by Ari Wisner. Now this is a new deck release coming from US Game Systems. By the time you see this video, look at that, so cute. By the time you see this video, um, it should be ready to go. So it says a beautifully concise 78 card tarot deck that is ideal for both beginners and seasoned readers. Includes a prompt sheet of card meanings and reimagined genderless card titles. And so they've changed the page, pages to apprentice, the knight to champion, the queen to keeper, and the king to crown. And then for some of the trumps, they've re, um, renamed the high priestess as the revealer, the hierophant as the proclaimer, the empress as the nurturer, and the emperor as defender, which is actually not that many renamings. I thought there were more. Um, so I was kind of feeling like, oh, this is going to be hard to read, but that's not that many to be honest. I think I can keep up with that. I pulled this one out because I wanted to kind of show you guys the um, the size. It's tiny. It's bitty. <laughs> it's definitely, I've been watching these videos recently about travel decks or bag decks or something like that. And I feel like this could be definitely one to toss in the bag, you know? Um, it's very bitty. This is a 10 size deck and you can see that it's even shorter, but definitely wider than the 10 deck because it's a square but it's small it's i mean essentially it's about the, i guess it takes up about the same space but it feels smaller it feels even smaller than a, a 10 deck to me <laughs> so yeah that's super cute we're gonna look at these side by side so that we can take a look i'm gonna just pop this over to the side for a second so here's the ends Ooh, look there's a little butterfly and a message and i think is that the hopey hand let me see. It says, as you seek guidance from the universe, never forget that divinity dwells in your hands too. Divinity expands outward and inhabits all of nature, making you a unique expression of itself. Like a hand or a branch of a tree, you're a part of the Trinity. May you find grace, courage, and empowerment within. Much warmth, Ari. That's a message from our creator. Now, if you're wondering who Ari Wisner is and you're like, I know that name. Um, Ari Wisner is the creator of the Transient Light Tarot. Um, they are also the artist for, there was a Kyle Gray Oracle deck. Oh goodness, the name is gonna go away, isn't it? It's gonna escape me. I'll put it on the, oh, um, raise your vibrations the raise your vibrations or they did the artwork for that one so those are the two off the top of my head that i can think of this one was an indie deck that us games picked up and has now released mass market so if you were into ari's indie deck but you couldn't get it maybe because of where they live or whatever you know maybe there's only a few printings it's now mass mass market you can get it on amazon you can buy it wherever you buy your tarot decks um and I think that that's exciting. I like it when indie decks go mass market so that more people can have access to them. Um, it definitely makes it uh, more accessible. So let's take a look at the, the little printout here. So you get a little fold out. And it, yeah, we got it all in there. So there's an introduction to the tarot. There's about the creator. It says Ari Wisner is a queer artist, illustrator, and a tarot deck maker based in London. Through art and tarot decks, Ari aims to create tangible tools to aid reflection, prompt intuition, and promote authentic, peaceful living. You can find Ari at ariwisner.com. And then it talks about the structure of the deck, and then there's some basic keywords to help you along, and there's a three-card spread. I seek, I am, and I can. What's on the back? Oh, more keywords. <laughs> more keywords. This is the minor, the minor keywords. This is nice that they're all... Like you can just put this down and have them all together um, in one piece of paper like this. It's nice they put them all on one side. The, my, the majors are, this is easy to navigate is what I'm trying to say. I have other um, decks with these like fold out papers that are like a pain in the ass to like figure out like which way does it go? But this one is super easy to, to find what I'm looking for. So that's cool. Even if I wanted to fold it up like this. Make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, I like this. This is easy to, to use. All right, so let's, um, let's take a look at cards. Get them out of their prison. Okay, so here are the backs of the Trinity Tarot. This is a beautiful back. It's gorgeous. It does have um, the copyright as always, but the, the backs are completely reversible. So 
there's copyright on both sides. There's no problem there. So that's the back of the Trinity Tarot. And on this side, on this side here with the star, I have the universal weight in a 10 because I wanted to just kind of see, I don't know, I, something in me wants to see how they, if they, I know that this deck is very simple in its imagery and I just kind of wanted to see what's going to, what, what they pulled from the symbolism on this deck, which is what people normally pull from into this one, but my brain doesn't want to work so hard. So I'm just going to keep the, the deck here <laughs> so we can look at those together. So we have the fool and the echo that I see here is the face raised up, right? Like we have that raised face and also the colors. I have blue and we have the gold. Nice. The magician. Okay, so what's what they pulled here are the tools. Here's one of the first changed names, the revealer. This is our high priestess. So we have a crown, but it's a different looking crown. They did pull in the red for the pomegranates without actually putting the pomegranates there. We got the moon, we got the pillars. Here's our empress with our 12 starred crown and the she the Venus um, symbol. I'm not exactly sure what this is. This round thing is that at first I thought it was an eye, a eye like a eyeball, but that doesn't make sense to me. So I'm not sure exactly what that is, but definitely looks like an Empress card with that crown and that Venus symbol. Okay, we have the Unk here and the Defender. The Unk, we have the Ram's Horns. The Proclaimer. This one has a book. It definitely has the keys and the crosses, the cross matches. But this, I'm going to use this to point because I don't want to, um, this is really small and I don't want to put my big, my big finger in here and cover things up. So, <laughs> so this is, um, we have the cross here. We have the keys at the bottom here at the bottom of both images. And we have the pillars. In this one, there's a book with a star. Um, so it's almost like this book is is gleaming. And I like that for the Hierophant rather than putting a person here that instead of um, a person, we have, um, you know, just the, the actual knowledge, the actual words. I, um, yeah, so it definitely gives us, you know, the gender neutral version so that's good i like that well actually people neutral all together here's another one where we would have genders here taking out people all together it looks like i'm not seeing too many people i do see an eye here that's definitely a human eye um so it feels like a human eye but actually i guess it's meant to be an all-seeing eye like an angel eye or something from above watching down on us we we still get the mountain we still get this air you know cloud we still get the fire and the snake um instead of a man and a woman and we get uh this is water a water symbol and a fire symbol so a receptive and an expressive element so that's yeah perfect for the lovers i think we did so it's there's a lot of little symbols packed in here what do we get from here <laughs> what's been so we get our moons there's a scepter, which is here. Um, you get this, uh, is it laurel leaf crown? So yeah, there's also water, which the chariot has water. And you know, I'm not sure that I ever noticed that before. <laughs> I, I think I knew it because of course the chariot is like the cancer, but, um, and cancer is a water sign, but I just never, um, I'm not sure I ever really paid too much attention to that outside of the first study of the cards, you know what I mean? <laughs> but this kind of brought it back to my attention. So that's cool. I like that. I like that it's bringing things back to my attention. It's definitely causing me to zoom in on some of the symbolism that I don't normally maybe hold uh, to the forefront of my mind. This, the lantern has changed into a candle. 
when I'm reading tarot, I don't always, because I'm not always working with RWS anyway. Um, a lot of the times I'm working with, yeah, all of the lettering is here. And it looks like they changed. So I'm not sure what, where these symbols come from. Um, but maybe they're updated versions of these yeah. at like Leo and the Aquarius, and this is um, what is that, Scorpio? And I don't even know, Taurus. <laughs> I'm terrible with these symbols, but <laughs> maybe I'll get better at it if I use this deck. Okay, Justice. Yep, we got our scales and our sword. And, uh, for the hanged man, there's a cross. So sacrifice, that makes sense, right? Um, I like that it's a necklace. My father used to wear um, a cross necklace. Death, yep. And they pulled this in to the forefront, which is cool. Temperance. Pulled the crown here. They pulled the crown in mountains, zoomed in on that, and then added this in and changed the the fire symbol to this um this star. I can't remember what this is called, but um it's that 3D star, the devil. Okay, yeah, it's echoing the the lovers card. Hang on, let me find the lovers. Okay, so here's the lovers. We've added the chains. And instead of it, it looks so much more boxed in, right? The This looks more free and the, the snake is outside, the fire is outside, and this is trapped. And the eye it definitely looks more sinister. So I like, I like the, I like that. That's cool. The devil, the tower. Cool. This is cute. I like it when the tower doesn't make me, I mean, there's still lightning and fire, okay? So, I mean, it's the tower, but it's cute. And it, it's not this where people are falling and screaming. And it just, I don't like to see. <laughs> I already have issues with the tower. So um, this is the star. No hands, but we still have both jars pouring to different sides with a star breaking through. Isn't that interesting? I don't know if I've ever seen the star card depicted in that way, but I like it. The moon. The moon. Yes. I like the way uh, we have a red eye here. I don't know, sinister nature or whatever you want to call it. Here's our sun. Moon, sun, and where's the star? Hang on, so you can see them together. Yeah, get them all on the screen. I'm too zoomed in. <laughs> person who is not feeling babies in your cards or if you're the type of person I know a lot of people say they don't like this baby it doesn't bother me but or if you're the type of person who doesn't like people in their cards but also doesn't jive with animal cards I think this one could be a good option it's not a Marseille deck but it's definitely stripped down there's lots of symbolism on it um uh-oh, hang on. Okay, I put them in order. So we have um, a hand with, I like the, um, the cuff here. It makes it feel very modern and it makes it feel very human, you know? And it looks like this person is actually receiving a cut from this sword or, you know, maybe sharing blood with this sword. It almost feels like one of those rituals that you see on little kids movies where it's like we're blood packs blood brothers or something like that um it's interesting to think about for the ace of swords the two brought the moon in the three um the rain goes to the side the composition of that is cute uh the soft heart being pierced that's cute just these are four the five so now it's getting pippy um but i like the way the pips are on the card it's not a marseille style pip this is definitely an rws based deck you can clearly see this is interesting 
Um, so <laughs> we have six swords and then one grayed out. And then what are these? Are these coins down here? Let's see what the coins look like. What are the coins? No, they're not coins. What are those? I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you have the stack of the indie or if you have um, any idea what you think these could be. Interesting. Somebody swiped one of the swords right off the wall. <laughs> Eight. I like the boxes. These are stable figures that can be turned or it's almost like a Rubik. It feels like a Rubik's cube, you know? figuring your way to com to the completion to be able to reach the the light on the inside um i also like that we have dark swords and light swords so it's like you know balancing one on top of the other it's almost like uh the the epitome of doing shadow work right you want to um balance your light and shadow so if we turn this so that this lays completely on top of this then you become whole like the circle and that's where the enlightenment comes from, right? I like that. The Nine of Swords. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> um, the Ten. Oh, no. <laughs> At least it's not a person getting stabbed. We just have a full-on coffin. So the person's absolutely dead. Okay, Prentice. So this will be our page. This is where we changed. I love this for the Page of Swords, the book. The Knight. Our queen, who has been dis um, assembled altogether. Interesting. So we have the sword. We have a key. Butterfly, no clouds. I'm interested in this key with the crown on it. Interesting. All right. Well, I'll have to look deeper into that later. Crown. I want to keep going. There's our crown of swords. This is the king. He's wearing the eye on a necklace. Interesting. With his knowledge, he wears the talisman or a badge or something. There's his crown. I'm going to keep those aside so we can look at them together. It almost makes me feel like the queen is the leader, is the heir, and the king is the water. It's interesting. I'll have to take a closer look at it later. Ace of Pentacles. Because that's that's going to throw me in a reading. Ace of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. The Three, cute. <laughs> like the floorboards here. The Four. Wow. He is hanging there. Why would you put your key there? So, so anyone could come along and, and get in there. The Five. Like they fell off, like it popped and everything spilled off. And if you know that feeling where if you pop a bead, a beaded chain or something and they just all start to pour off and there's nothing that can be done and you're trying to run around and catch them, I guess that could be the feeling of the five of coins moment, right? Like when you're in the thick of it, you just feel like, God, like, why is this happening to me? How am I going to stop it? Six of pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles. Like I'm never going to catch all these beads. <laughs> eight of Pentacles. I love an Eight of Pentacles. And I like this one a lot with the paintbrush and the chisel and, and the pencil and just all the tools. I like it. Um, nine of Pentacles. Cute. Making the, the, the wine. Ten. That looks like a church, but I guess it's a house or a barn, maybe a hacienda. And now we have our page. It kind of has the same upright look as this page, right? Because it's like offering gift and the seed is offering the flower, starting it anew. I like, I like the composition of it. I think it feels like it's standing almost exactly like this page. Um, so. 
the knight. Okay, so all of the knights, it looks like, have these sort of helmets. There's our queen, another queen with a key. This one looks like it does have water. Interesting. Red jewels and... Here's our king. Let's look at them together. Hmm. Ace of Cups, two, cute, <laughs> three, the four, I like that with the water coming in. It's not just turned upright, it's actually being filled, the five. The bridge is interesting here. <laughs> the way they drew this bridge is kind of cute. It's interesting. The whole deck is cute, but I, this is, it's different. I've never seen anything like this. It's almost as if, um, it reminds me of like sewing, you know, um, like if a thread is going to go through the cloth and I don't know, it just, it, it's interesting. <laughs> the six cups, cute. Very nice. The seven. And eight, and the nine, and the ten. Aww. We even still got a little rainbow in there, in the middle, <laughs> with a big sun. It's nice. I like that. All right, here we go with these courts. The page. Okay. Yeah, I like that. The pages and the nights. I I I like. Um, the queens and the kings are confusing me. Like this queen, I, I get this queen. I can see, you know, where she's a, um, a receptacle for emotions. She's holding it. She actually has, I, I can, I can see this. The king, this time he's got a heart on his necklace. That's the, so onto the last suit. Ace of wands. Everything's crooked. Let me fix it. All right. These are Ace of Wands. Two. Yep. Three. I wonder what the significance of these red ribbons are in this one. Because um, I would think I would see red ribbons in this one, like in here. But instead, we have red ribbons here. And also, there's a red ribbon running through here. And I've seen quite a few of these red ribbons holding things, running through things. So now I'm curious. I might message them. Let's see. If anybody knows, let me know. <laughs> if anybody knows, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to have to bother the creator because I got to know. <laughs> this is the Six of Wands. We're looking very much like a Six of Wands. The Seven looking like a Seven. Eight looking like eight and the nine. Yep. I mean, these look very easy to recognize, very easily recognizable. Um, this 10 is a little less, you know, less RWS, but it's still clear. Um, and here we go with the courts. So we have the ace, I mean, the apprentice, mm -hmm. the knight. queen with her little cat <laughs> and the king has the fire necklace okay so because i'm a nerd i need to see this laid out so let's let's just take a quick look at them all together at these courts um these two like i said make perfect sense to me the aces i mean not the aces i keep calling them the aces i mean the pages the pages and the knights make perfect sense to me um for some reason i don't have any issues with those these are the two that are tripping me up this queen of wands i think it's this these keys um the keys ring to me like air uh, like the you know knowledge or information or, or unlocking secrets even just um, so solutions and things like that and so because I associate the queens with water 
seeing keys on the uh, queens is throwing me for a little bit of a loop. Yeah, the when I'm looking at these two, I can see the difference in the energy here. I think it's the horns that are doing it for me here. So these, again, these two are filling. Oh, wait, I, I moved them. I have them switched here because the keeper, I told you the keys make me think king. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I guess she's the keeper, so she has the keys, but I don't know. It's just, it's throwing me off. It could just be my brain. But with this one, um, I, I didn't have uh, this. I can see, I can clearly see this one. So I think, um, the two that were clear to me, the, the earth and water suit were, were pretty clear for me and the, um, the air and fire suit were the ones I was having issues with. But I think, I mean, I get the key as a keeper, right? I get that. But like I said, I tell the, the key represents other things for me. And so it throws me off just a little bit, but it's only four cards in the deck. The rest of them made perfect sense to me. What I did notice while I was playing with this was that um, as I am shuffling them, sometimes they get a little turned around. And I thought that that was kind of fun, to be honest. I thought, wouldn't it be curious to have a deck that you could, um, because it's square, you could read all different ways. And instead of just having reversals, wait, did I just mix these up? I think I did. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I'm good. Instead of just having reversals, I could have, you know, when it turns up sideways, if it turns up upside down, if it, you know what I mean? That would be, that would be kind of cool. All right. So the cardstock is US Games usual buttery matte cardstock. If you know this sort of uh, buttery coating that they have. They, they glide nicely. They shuffle easily. They're very, they're small. So I have small hands. So these are really great for me. Um, even so, yeah, I can shuffle and bridge them with no problem. Normal size tarot card. Um, you can see that they're shorter and a good and a little bit, a little bit wider here. Look at that. Ugh. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> a little bit wider and 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 sh and shorter than a normal size tarot. So I I I think this is adorable. I want to use this. Um, I think I'm gonna use this. I've been talking to people about tarot and writing, and this is something new to me. And I'm not a writer by any means, but I think it would be an interesting way to pass the afternoon to go to the library and just use my tarot decks to write. A couple of short stories and just see how that plays out like i've never done it before i think it would be fun and um i was thinking something like this might be nice to take with me to the library since it's so neutral like it just it looks like a little game it doesn't look like a tarot deck so if i encounter because you know if i encounter anybody at the library that might be averse to tarot um I won't have any, I won't have any problems, you know. <laughs> so I think that this would be really cool to to do that with. Also, I mean, it's not very peoply, so I don't know how it's going to work for the stories, but um, I think it would be cool to to use in, in public places. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think that this is adorable. Look how it lays out. It kind of oh, almost looks like I can do like a grand tableau with it. <laughs> it could read like a Lenormand deck, you know what I mean? What if it comes up like this, you know? What if it, does that mean that it's just a little bit blocked or does that mean that we should focus more on this card because the top of the card is facing this way or if this is the underneath of this or, you know, like what, what does it mean? You know, I like, I like the idea of having these, these square, little square cards. Um, pretty sure I don't have another square tarot deck, so I'm excited about that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, you can subscribe. I release videos every few days regarding tarot and oracle. So I will put in the description box where you can pick this cute little thing up. It's adorable. Um, look at that sun card. It's so pretty and soothing. The colors are really soothing to me. These, this white and teal and this sort of, I don't know, it's like an orange juice color. <laughs> it's just, it's very soothing. It's like breakfast by the beach, you know, like I just, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, 
So anyways, yeah, I'll put in the description box where you can pick them up. And until I see you guys next time, stay safe and be blessed. Bye.